Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Tech with KG here, but you can call me KG. Um, what's going on, everybody? It's been a while. It's been a while, but I'm here. I'm back with the A95L um, from Sony. Sony QD OLED for 2023. Let me know how the audio is. Let me know how you guys are doing today. Because um, it's been a while. Like I said, we haven't chatted in a while, right? um shout out to uh classy tech calibrations good friend of the channel awesome dude um he's been a member for 23 months so i thank you for that classy i appreciate that uh he says i think there will be an a95 m mild upgrade but not before august or september so if you want sony specifically i wouldn't let the fomo hold you back and i agree entirely with this um there's this mindset where you know, I'll just wait. CES is around the corner. I'll just wait. But what you guys have to understand is if Sony is uh, the focus, they're always going to release their flagship right around August and September. So that's one of the things you got to remember if you think that CES is around the corner. Yes, but Sony not necessarily is around the corner. You know what I'm saying? So while the other TVs might drop in March, April, uh, Sony typically will still drop in August, September for their flagship TVs. Specifically, the Master Series. Like, if there is an A95M, for example, you know, like Classy's saying here, it's not going to drop until August or September. So, yeah, I appreciate that, Classy. Um, I agree entirely. Um, let me say what's up to everybody in the chat. We got Lisa. What's going on? Um, Tony. Awesome. Everybody, I'm just going to pop up names here and we're just going to go through it. David, long time. High def, of course. Um, before, before we get into that, high def, we got a little bit of a rivalry going on this week. So, uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, go Broncos, of course. Um, Combat Genix, he says, do you think that the QD OLED from Sony is worth an upgrade coming from a C1 movies and PS5 gaming? Well, I think in general, going from a W OLED to a QD OLED is an upgrade for sure. Um, is it a worthy upgrade? For a lot of people, it might be something that they notice right off the bat. And for others, it might not be as big of an upgrade as they hope for. I'd say if you watch a lot of content, that produces a lot of high color, especially if you're somebody who pushes brightness a lot, then QD OLED makes a lot of sense, especially if you're a gamer. I think when I jumped from W OLED to QD OLED the first time, I automatically noticed that. I was like, my brain saw something I haven't seen before. So that triggered a response. And that's why I was so high on the S95B when it came out. And, you know, I think that's why everybody's so high on QD OLED in general. The the difference in brightness from W OLED to QD OLED is quite noticeable just off of eyes. So it's like if you're just looking at the TVs, especially when they are side by side, I think once they are side by side, then you really understand that jump. But since like if you view a TV separately, your eyes have time to adjust. So I think when you're upgrading a TV, that upgrade sometimes doesn't feel as great. But once you have them side by side, like, so if you're going to have your TV before you get rid of it, I recommend hooking up your new TV next to your old TV. That way you can really understand and get a sense of that upgrade uh, because that feeling is great once you do see it. I remember when I hooked up my um, Samsung, was it Q90T? I hooked that up right next to the LG C7 and I wasn't sure about that upgrade because it was like, I'm going from an OLED um to to one of these mini led tvs or i'm sorry this wasn't mini led this was just a qled tv but i'm going from oled to a qled tv like what what is there to expect and you know that brightness factor kicked in for me right away so i was okay with that and i was okay with sacrificing some of that black level but in the sense of going for w oled into qd oled there's like no downside to that. And I think most people will appreciate that difference, especially if they hook it up side by side, which I highly recommend doing if you, up, if you upgrade your OLED to a QD OLED. So 
sorry for the little bit of a long-winded response on that one but um yeah i definitely wanted to let you guys know on that so a couple of expectations for this stream i wanted to set like beforehand uh one don't really judge the stream quality as like the camera quality or the tv quality like we we max out at 1080p here i'm using a service called streamyard so i want you to remember that 1080p is the best i can do two internet issues can pop up at any time i use comcast internet and we all know how that can be um and then three what i'm showing you on the screen here is going to be like the representation of what you're getting out of the box. I believe I have it in professional mode right now. Um, and that's going to be like what I think a lot of people are going to go to. The other thing that you can do with this TV is put it into cinema mode. It's like professional mode, but it does give you a little bit of pop to the picture because it does add a little bit of advanced contrast enhancer and some live color. So that's just something that uh, I think like owners or potential owners would want to know. And then of course you have standard and vivid as well. Um, but when it comes down to this TV, uh, there's a lot to love about it and I'll go over it in this video. It's really going to be kind of an overview. We're going to go through some settings, um, see what's new about the TV. I'll also throw on some gaming, I'll take requests from the chat. So if you have a request, make sure you do leave that in the chat. Um, I'll be answering all questions, not just super chats. So if you have questions, I'll pull up chat, um, all kinds of questions. Um, but super chats are always greatly appreciated. So those that do that, I do appreciate it. Um, we also do have members that can do their member milestone chat. So if you are a member of the channel, don't forget you have that member milestone chat that you can do, um, every month. So take advantage of that. It's like a super chat and it's going to pop up. Uh, some cool graphics and stuff. Let's see. Um, let me go through the questions a little bit. Also, oh yeah, before I go through the questions, what you're seeing here is just really this um, LG demo playlist. And I really like this because there's no ads in between. And it's just going to be a good way for me to like show you the TV um, without any interruptions, right? And I really just love displaying this playlist for all the TVs that I grab for live streams. It's just like my live stream playlist pretty much. Uh, but we will show different content on it. So do not worry about that. Uh, let's see. Is this the brightest non-torch setting? Uh, I would say the brightest non-torch setting. I mean, I, I guess you're referring to maybe standard and vivid um, as the torch settings. Uh, then I would say cinema is like your next step up from professional. And like I mentioned, you can always uh, do little tweaks and changes uh, to professional mode, for example. Really, it's just adding, you know, contrast enhancer um, and live color to kind of make it pop a little bit more. Uh, so this is a 55 inch size. Uh, did you notice an improvement in reality creation compared to last year? That's a pretty good question. It's kind of hard to judge that. I think reality creation uh, as its own is a little bit underrated. And when people talk about it, I feel like they don't give it enough justice. It's one of the few like actual working features that will kind of sharpen only at the right locations. Um, because it's based on an algorithm. So I don't know if you guys ever use reality creation, but if you crank up reality creation, say to like 99, you're not sharpening the whole entire image. It's just going to find the locations that need improvements and try to work on that. It's not perfect, but it is pretty remarkable on how that works. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Hopefully you'll be able to see it on stream. Let's see. W says, I'm hard pressed to believe that it's really that much better than the 77S90C with any content or gaming to justify the cost increase. Well, I mean, it's just going to depend on what you need it for. Uh, at the end of the day, this TV is not going to be for everybody. And I do believe like the S90C 
or even the AADL might be better fits for a lot of newcomers or people that's buying their first uh, premium TV, you know, buying an S90C or an AADL, you know, or even a C3, though I don't really recommend the C3, but I can understand if people want LG and that's what they got to go with, then, you know, I understand going with the cheaper options. And the S90C is really good. There's no doubt about it. I've talked about how good the S90C is. So it's just going to depend on what you need it for. Um, and then you're right. It is sometimes hard to justify the cost of getting an A95L. Like, so what I would say about the TV increases when you're going from, say, an A80L to an A95L is much how I look at going from the S90C to the S95C. For most people, it's probably not worth worth it, right? Because um, we're talking about just minimal improvements and you're not going to visually be able to tell the difference, say, from an S90C to an S95C. I would say that majority of you guys would probably think that they're very similar. And even the S95B to the S95C, I didn't see a huge jump there. So that's just one of those things that you're paying for minimal increases. There's no doubt about that. So you'll have to remember that when you're paying these kind of prices for TVs, it's, it's rough. It is rough because you're not going to get your full values worth no matter what. But you're just buying into the value, into the, the longevity of the TV. And you just hope that it is going to be the TV that's going to hold you over for five years, you know. And I'll say this, that if you're getting something like the Master Series TVs, you're getting the total package, right? And if sound matters to you, there is nothing better than the A95L in terms of sound. So if you're somebody who does use a TV sound, it's really insane. Um, so let's see. Going through chat here. And I'm sorry if I do miss one of your questions. Uh, I'm solo today, so I might have a guest here or there uh, pop in, but no guarantees. Uh, I didn't get any confirmation or much. I know that um, Classy is at work right now, so he said he might pop in. He might pop in. Uh, let's see. So I see this question a few times. Uh, would you choose a 65 A95L or a 77 A80L? And I also seen this question with, say, the C3, 65 inch um, G3 versus a 77 C3. You know, and I'm when we're talking about w the sizes, you can't really replace size and there's only so much content that will display better on QD OLED than say a W OLED, especially in the dark room. Right. And it also just depends on how you watch TV as well. Um, because there's no doubt about it. The QD OLED will be the brighter, more impactful TV. But on the other hand, you're still getting the same type of, image quality as far as processing goes and upscaling and um, all the things that are great about the Bravia XR. So in that respect, if you watch a lot of content that's mostly streaming and everything, uh, TV shows, sports, for example, then I would probably go with the 77 inch AADL in that case, because size, you just can't replace that. And it really does depend on how far you sit because the further you sit back from a TV, like the less you're going to notice that quality difference. So if you're sitting too far from a TV to really appreciate that quality difference, then I feel like that would be, kind of be a waste in a way. So I'd say it depends on how far you sit.
Sorry, I'm looking through chat here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, so if you guys have questions, leave them in the chat, um, and I will get to them. So let's go through the menu a little bit. And I want to display this new UI. And it's really a nice UI, to be honest with you. It's, it's different from the other Sony TVs. As you can see, it, it appears like it's just hovering. It's not like this block on the bottom of the screen. Uh, it's really nice to navigate. So there's ways to move around the uh, things just by holding it down. I can't remember if the AADJ had that or not. It might have. It might have not. Um, it's downstairs, so I can't really check right now. But you have the option to add things and edit. I believe you had that with the older ones as well. But one thing I do have to note is that for some reason, the picture settings was disengaged. Like this wasn't selectable. And I mentioned that in my little unboxing first impressions. So if you've already seen that, you, are, you already kind of know about that. Uh, but I wanted to go through this just, just in case not everybody knew about it. And then uh, the picture modes, they have a calm mode, which is supposed to like apparently be for kids when you're trying to get your kids to bed. Uh, there's professional mode, cinema mode, like I mentioned, really just adds advanced contrast enhancer and a little bit of live color, standard mode vivid mode so i'm doing professional mode um normally i would probably sometimes do cinema mode but professional mode is showing up really nicely on camera so we'll keep it like that like i said i will switch to some games a little bit later to show you game mode but i really just wanted to pop on here put the put Yeah, I want to make sure everybody's questions are answered. Uh, Rand, thank you for the question. He says uh, SDR stands for standard. No, SDR, when I say SDR, I mean standard dynamic range. Um, and what you're seeing right now is uh, high dynamic range. So the difference is that it's going to be the signal that's sent to the TV. And that's what we're talking about when it's SDR or HDR. And typically, like, anime and stuff is going to be SDR. So that's standard dynamic range. Um, when I was talking about standard, that's just the uh, TV setting. And standard is going to be your typical cooler setting. Um, a little bit more tamer than vivid. Not quite vivid. Uh, but along the same lines as that. For most people, I would say, like, you're gonna like what cinema mode gives you. Unless you're somebody who likes cooler temperature, then standard mode is gonna be your go-to or vivid mode. Um, for those of you that like the torch modes. CJ, this is a good question. Um... I haven't heard the A80L in a closed off location. I've heard it in a more open location. It sounds pretty similar to what I got with the A80J. So not as great as the A95L. That's just a whole nother level. Um, yeah, I understand you mean soundbar. Um, so when we're talking about it, like what type of soundbar are you getting really matters. Because I would say the A95L is enough to surpass most sub $400 soundbars and maybe even some of the mid-range soundbars because this thing is really capable, right? I would say the only thing it's really missing is some deep, deep bass, but even it's got some okay bass, so you can get away with that. Um, it depends on the soundbar that you're getting, I would say. And then, of course, you can always add on stuff later, which is nice. 
Yeah, and Rand, I would say if your room is small, there is no point in getting uh, external speakers or a soundbar with the A95L. It's it's good enough. Yeah, it, I would say it's more than good enough. It's it's great. Um, it's something that I personally wouldn't have a soundbar for if it was my go-to TV. Um. Zach, uh, yeah, so the One Connect box on the S95C does have the potential to show dropouts, uh, mostly with gaming. I haven't seen it running any other sources. I've had an issue where my HDMI wasn't going to display properly or it's just not going to show up at all. It'll just say, like, there's no signal detected. I've had that happen a couple of times on the S95C, and I've noted that. So, yeah, this is a real issue. Um, some people are reporting they don't have any issues with it. I think it is more of a rare thing than something like a common occurrence. So, I don't know if it's related to heat. Um, I'm not sure the mechanics behind it or why it does it. But we just know that it does happen, and I've experienced it myself as well. Yeah, no, and I understand, like, everybody's living situation is different. And that's why I love to talk about, like, use case, especially when it comes down to sound. Because I understand when you have a smaller space or when you have a space that is limited to what you can actually deliver as far as sound goes because of neighbors, because of, you know, whatever rules, you know, anything. Um, there's always some sort of restriction for some people. And I think the A95L sound is good enough for that type of situation. Uh this is uh this is the demo that's an SDR <laughs> and I actually have it on a really really dim SDR setting because I didn't want it to blind me when I was sleeping. So um let me go to some more HDR demos for you guys. Sorry about that. Where is it? I think this is HDR. Um, so do you think and believe XR clear image is a big deal? Yes, I, I believe it's a big deal. I seen it firsthand, like when you put on streaming, for example, there is a difference in clarity, like in clarity. There is a difference in how clear the image is when you look at it. So image clarity, if that matters to you, Sony will always have that step up over other brands. Um, and you can even see this in 4K content. It just depends on how you're getting it delivered. If it's like a native 4K, like there's not gonna be huge differences there, but like if you're streaming, you will notice that, hey, this is clear. Or even in games that aren't full resolution, you'll notice that, hey, this is a little bit clearer. So I like what the Bravia XR does. It seems to clean up images really nicely. And that has been a thing since the AADJ. And they've improved it this year. So yeah, it's a real deal. We got Classy in the chat, so if you guys have any technical, technical questions that I can't answer, um, he will be able to answer them. So anything about calibration, um, he's the man to go to. And if you guys ever need your TV calibrated, he's the man to go to. If you're on the East Coast, he might be able to calibrate your TV. Um, but on the topic of calibration, um, you know, from, from what I've gathered, the A95L, is one of those TVs where you could buy it and you don't necessarily need to calibrate it. So that's really nice if that's something that you're into. Um, that's kind of a cost that you don't have to worry about in that sense if you're somebody who usually does get calibration. 
that said, you know, it's all just going to depend on who you are. So, Wes, I have to do some more testing. Um, I've done a lot of internal apps. I've I've done some external as well, but I haven't did like direct comparisons to another source. And so I have a lot more to test, but from what I've seen so far and I've watched YouTube TV on it and I just love how clear it is. Like I was watching it next to a Samsung and it was pretty clear in that sense. I was watching it next to an LG and it was pretty clear as well. So it does definitely do a better job with streaming than other TVs as far as clarity goes. So if image clarity matters to you, that's something that it's really good at. Got Jets fans in the house um, talking trash. I'll let you guys have that trash that you can talk it. Uh, I think after you lose to a team 70 to 20, you can't really talk trash anymore. So um, I'll just hope that they win. I'll just hope the Broncos win, and we'll just leave it at that. We'll just leave it at that. But um, I do have a feeling that Zach Wilson is about to come back down to earth this weekend. So don't get too uh, don't get too high up on those Jets. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, Classy did an excellent job at this shootout. Uh, I do have to say, I do have to say. How come Sony doesn't release their own demos? I, you know, it's something that I really wish they have like available on their YouTube channel. Like, like LG has this available on their YouTube channel. Uh, Sony demos are out there. You just have to find them. Um, and just type in Sony HDR demo. It should pop up. But um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna try to see if I can push uh push the word out. Maybe at CES, find some Sony employees at CES and be like, hey, uh, you should put some demos on your YouTube. That'd be really cool. Um, whether the A95L is worth the extra money over the S95C or G3, I would say like if sound matters to you, yes, absolutely it's worth the money. Um, uh, as far as everything else, it's hard to justify what's worth the money to you. I would say if you're doing a lot of streaming, like I mentioned, then yeah, I would get over the S95C or G3. You're already paying a lot of money to go beyond an S90C at that point. You know, I would argue that the S90C is good enough for most people, like don't even consider the S95C or G3 in that case. But if you're already to the limit where you're going, if you're already taking it up a notch and you're going to the S95C or G3, in my mind, I would just go with the A95L. If, if you're in that budget range, I would just say it is worth it for that sense. But if you're looking at S90C, you know, jumping from an S90C to an A95L, that's a huge jump in price consideration. So, yeah, that's 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 a tougher question um, to say if that's worth it. Uh, what's your favorite demo that I could try on the A95L? If you go and type in HDR Super Channel on YouTube, Jennifer Gala does a really good job at demos, and she has a really awesome demo with the volcano that I absolutely love on the A95L. Um, let me see if I can pull it up for you. So, bear with me for just a second as I switch content. And um, be right back. So I'm still here. Don't worry. Um, I'm just uh, finding this demo for you right now. So like I said, if you have those questions, ask them in the chat. Just switching the content. Yeah, but Jennifer Gala does produce some really amazing work. I think this is it right here. Okay, let's get the, the Burger King commercial. If you're asking why I went to the screen, it's because ads play in front of um, videos and 
well, sometimes copyright comes for ads too. It's weird, but that's what happens. I had an AirPod thing trigger me one time, and nah, that wasn't fun. So, but yeah, this is Jennifer Gala's um, content, and it's really awesome. So, well, <laughs> wrong thing. When I saw that, I was like, ooh, that's nice. Um, so yeah, shout out to Jennifer Gala. She's sometimes in the chat. A89L or S90C for mostly PS5 Switch gaming. You know, I didn't even know an A89L existed, but yeah, I, um, I really don't know about that TV. If it's similar to an A80L, I would say I give the slight edge to the S90C um, just because it is a better gaming TV overall, I think, as far as colors and brightness goes. Uh, but I don't know what the A89L is, so I don't want to speak too much on that, I'll just say. That must be a region specific um model there. So a lot of chat about uh second generation panels versus first generation panels for the S9. Definitely a lot of people telling me they're getting second generation panels now. So your chances of getting one is Pretty high, I would say. Sounds like from Costco, a lot of people are getting it. I've heard a couple of people get it from Best Buy. And um, Amazon as well, I guess. Okay. That's nice. Do you think the ADL needs a soundbar at smaller rooms? Probably not. I, I, would, I honestly can get away with my AADJ in a smaller room. So... ADL will probably be fine. The great thing about the um, Sony TVs is you can always add on a soundbar later, right? Um, and then still use the TV for a center channel. That's nice. Like, really good stuff. Yeah, Jennifer is awesome at producing content for sure. Oh yeah, I definitely like the layout. I think it's really great. There's a lot to love about this. They also separate the motion for um 30 FPS and 60, which is nice. Can we ask, is there any groundbreaking new TV technology for 2025? That's quite a ways away. Um, there's nano led on the way, whether we see that in 2025 or not. There is the uh, FOLED, phosphorus, um, phosphorus blue OLED, maybe even phosphorus blue cutie OLED, who knows? Um, but yeah, there's a lot to be excited for in the future. That's the thing, there's always something new around the corner. And it's never the most amazing time to buy a TV, no matter what. Like, you buy a TV, there's always going to be better TVs that come out. I'm sorry to tell you that. 
Um, but that's just the way it works, right? However, I would say that, you know, if you're looking at, say, the S95B last year, right? You bought that, you aren't really regretting your purchase this year um, if you like that TV, which I still have the S95B and I'm looking at it. It looks really good compared to the A95L. It still does hold its own. Uh, the A95L is, of course, better because it's using second generation panel and Sony processing, but it's not too far off. Same thing with the A95K, exactly. Uh, Lisa, if you bought an A95K last year, there is no reason to consider the A95L, in my opinion. Um, so, in that sense, yeah, you're set, you know? And that's that's one of the things. Like, if you buy one of these flagship 4K OLED TVs, you're going to be set. And I don't think that nitpicking every TV that comes out f but beyond that is going to be healthy. because if you put them side by side, you're not going to notice a huge difference. Uh, Ford, thank you for the super chat. He said, I brought this up in classy stream, but ratings said their S90C updated review that auto color space was fixed. Apparently it wasn't though. Yeah, I don't know what's really going on behind that uh, statement, why they said that, why they think that, but auto still operates the same way um, as it always did. That's an intentional thing by Samsung. It's working as intended. However, it's not working just like the autos in every other TV. So it's just Samsung uses a different definition for what that setting is supposed to do. But apparently it is something that they're looking at changing so that it operates just like everybody else's TV. Now that's just, you know, what was being said at the the shootout. So we'll see. You're going to pull the trigger on the A95L? I'm considering it for sure. Um, it's one of the things I'm considering. I don't know if I want to buy this year as far as a big TV goes. If I do end up buying it, I might grab just a 55 inch for comparisons purposes. So I could have that all year long next year. That's a possibility. I've also thought about it for my personal set going 77 inches. Um, but I've also thought about an 85 inch uh, LCD for my personal set too. And I thought about the X95L. And I've also thought about the X90L, honestly. And the reason why I would go with the X90L is because it just seems like a really good value at 85 inches. There doesn't seem to be a better like overall value as far as picture quality, um, processing goes, things like that. And that 85 inch panel on LCDs from uh, that Sony have, is, the 85 inches are really good. But I just have to row the, I just have to weigh the pros and the cons. I really want size in this room because I do, I do miss having the 77 inch A80J up here. It's like downstairs now, but I'm mostly up here because I'm always working or taking breaks up here. Like I'm sitting here gaming on, uh, well now I'm gaming on the, the 65 inch, uh, S95 B, but while that was in a different room, I was sitting here gaming on a 48 inch uh, LG C, C2 or C1 actually. Yeah, C1. So move your seat closer. Yeah, you, you definitely could do that. Um, if you have like, say, an office chair that you move around or something. But if you have a couch, good luck. I'm sure your significant other will really hate you for that. Let's see. How is the 3D depth on the A95L and is it better than Samsung or an LG? That's something that's really kind of hard to judge. You know, the 3D depth, it's more of a, I would say, a subjective thing. It is very content dependent. There's something with processing where I think that 
mountains uh, scenery looks better on Samsung, for example, than it does on LG. But faces and and people seem to look a little bit better on LG compared to Samsung. And I don't know if this is like a processing thing or if it's just my eyes and it's in my head and I can't change it. But that's what I always see. And then when it comes down to Sony, everything looks really clear when it comes down to Sony. Um, and that depth, though, that you're talking about from the G3, like that's with the um, dynamic HDR tone mapping on, right? So that's when it's on. And it's really just everything's lit up. It's not, you're no longer going with the creator's intent after that, right? So shadow, shadows are enhanced, um, probably blown up a little bit more than they should be. So in some ways it can wreck the picture, but in other ways that algorithm really does make things look 3D at times on the G3. So it's, it's like a give or take with the G3. I love it sometimes and I also don't like it other times so i typically wouldn't even put it on to be honest with you because i'm not the biggest fan of dynamic tone mapping on the lg it it does look good the changes to it looks good in certain content but outside of like demo content and showcasing things like in movies I, i'm not using that setting I'm not using that setting because for me, it's the di it's the difference of like being on a movie set versus actually watching the movie, if that makes sense. Like my immersion is broken if I put on dynamic tone mapping. Like I am no longer like watching the movie. I'm more so just like seeing the movie as if it was on the set because everything is um, extra lit up and I don't know. It's just a personal preference thing at that point. So. You know, if you like it, then maybe you would like that kind of look. But it, it just goes back to creator's intent and all that, right? Like, I like creator's intent sometimes for movies. For games, not so much. At times, I like to switch things up. But for movies, yeah, I am mostly a creator intent guy. So I, I do like to keep it on the professional mode, the filmmaker mode for movies. I'm not the biggest fan of like Samsung's active for movies either. I feel like it does a very similar thing to dynamic tone mapping when it comes down to movies. Keep up the great job. Uh, and just wanted to know if you have time, can you make a video for the best settings on the LG G3 for movies only? Uh, thank you, Henry. And um, yeah, I can definitely make a settings video for the LG um, OLED TVs. Uh, for the G3 specifically, I'll add in some some settings. When it comes down to like making settings for these TVs, one thing you will have to understand is that if you make good settings for the G3, chances are they're going to work really good on a C3. Um, same thing with the S95C. If you find an S95C settings guide that you really like, but you wish they made a S ninety C guide. Like, use those same settings for the S ninety C because it's, it's it's honestly it's gonna work. There's not too much difference between them. Ah, oh, thank you, Lisa. Appreciate that. I want to do more live streams. I really do. Um, they don't feel the same without Max. Um, I really like having a co-host. Especially uh, Max is awesome. Classy's awesome as well as a co-host. And uh, whenever we can get FOMO or Brian or Brandon on, that's always a great thing, right? Whenever we can get guests on, that's always great. But I do need to try to do some more streams. It is harder to do solo, especially when you're running content in the background and you got to worry about ad showing for YouTube and all that. And Looking at chat and playing games, for example, is also very hard. So, like, that's why I'm going to do the gaming portion a little bit later. Um, and when I do it, I'm not going to be really playing. I'm just going to be walking around slowly, going through settings, things like that. Uh, 
Um, let's look. Um, Henry, thank you for the super chat. I don't know if you have an actual question to go along with this, but if you do, uh, make sure you leave that um, in the comments. But I appreciate appreciate the love there. Or maybe, okay, I just answered your question. But if you have another question, you can definitely uh, leave it. I'm trying to get to as many questions as I can. So this is my first time having an OLED coming from a Q60R. Is there any movie you'd recommend? Something that'll pop? Any genre will do. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, if you are a fan of superhero movies by any chance, um, Aquaman is one of the best HDR movies to watch. Um, I I absolutely love that movie when it comes down to the visuals. You know, not so much Amber Heard, but like everything else about that movie is really awesome. I think it's a it's a good movie, and the visuals are great in that movie. Can't wait to see the sequel, to be honest. And I'm I'm really burnt out on superhero movies, but that's a good one. Uh, I did some comparisons between G2 and S90C after some adjustments. S90C, not even close. S90C is much better. And that's one of the things I'm talking about. If you have the chance to do your own comparisons once you buy a new TV over the old TV, or if you're buying TVs right now, maybe pick up two TVs and just return the one you don't like. Put them side by side like I do. Um, and you'll have a lot of fun doing that. So... And then you'll be able to really tell the difference. All right, I'm going to switch the content real quick back to. Uh, let's go with some more Jennifer Gala. If I could find something. All right, we're going to go back to LG because. It's going to let us um, stream it the whole time without any ads interrupting us in between. Hmm. I wonder, do I have the Spears and Munzel disc in the thing? I could check, I could check. All right. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I still need to watch that movie, but I yeah, uh, I bet that does have good visuals. I've been avoiding that movie just because uh I'm kind of burnt out in superhero movies like I said. But uh also Blue Beetle is something I do want to watch. Uh Cause it's got that dude from Karate Kid in it, or Cobra Kai or whatever, and uh, I th I think he's a pretty good actor. So let's see. Um... Yeah, it's it's very subjective. Uh, Ford, that's that's the thing. Like when it comes down to TVs, it has to be somewhat subjective to a certain degree because, like, unless you have a reference monitor in front of you, you cannot be objective about. It like these things you just you just can't and everybody's gonna have different opinions and different feelings about things so yeah qd oled is the best technology the colors are insane i would agree right now nothing is beating qd oled as far as um, technology goes it's the reason why sony uses it for their master series it's the reason why samsung switched to oled tvs um it's it's definitely a game-changing technology and i really hope lg somehow embraces it because i feel like they are definitely lacking because they're not using it and that's unfortunate because i really like lg Despite what everybody thinks, I really like LG. It was my first OLED TV, 
And I think they do a lot of things great. I have a G2 and I would say game mode is outstanding. And that's the thing. Um, without something to compare it to, of course, you know, there's not going to be any way for you to think otherwise. Because there's no doubt about it, the G2 is a good TV. And so if you're going to a G2 and you're playing game mode, for example, it's going to look great to you. But I can call out little flaws here and there and compare it to other TVs only because I have them side by side. And that's why... I got to make that clear when I'm doing these um, examples and comparisons that mm, I'm really nitpicking here. Like, and I'm just trying to get you into the best TV for certain use cases. And that's why I say for game mode, you know, I'm not, I'm not typically the biggest LG fan because I've seen it next to the other TVs. And that goes back to the A80J against the C1. Like, I like the A80J for gaming better than the C1 also. I just think LG needs to step it up as far as game mode goes. It is something that I've been harping on them for, and I think it is something that should change. Like, that's the only thing that I think is holding LG back, ironically, because everybody looks at them as, you know, the best gaming TV. It is in f as far as, like, the features go, right? As far as it's got everything going for it. But when you look at the picture quality that, ADJ uh, versus the C1. I thought the ADJ was better. Um, the Samsung OLEDs versus the LG OLED. I thought the Samsung OLEDs are better as far as game mode goes. And I'm not the only one that thinks that, by the way. And that is a common shared opinion that um, the G3 does lack in game mode. I believe Vincent is one of the ones that pointed it out first. Um, are you trying to find HDMI 2.1 ports? So yeah, the Sony actually only has two available and I get that's probably what you're alluding to. Um, how many people use more than two HDMI 2.1 ports, though? Um, I typically wouldn't, but I guess if you have a console that has HDMI 2.1 and another console that has HDMI 2.1 and then maybe your PC, and then you're using a soundbar, okay, then you got to probably get a splitter or a AV device, an um, AVR. But I think the majority of the people probably, this isn't a big deal. It's just one of those things where you expect to see it, right? And I think that's that they definitely deserve to um, have criticism thrown upon them for that. They they should by this time have four HDMI 2.1 ports. Everybody else does. So, yeah. But I mean, like, is it a big deal? I mean, we can make it a big deal, but it's not going to change the way I use the TV. So for me, it's not personally a big deal. It just depends on what you have. Yeah, not a big deal. The ports uh, reviewers on YouTube say that, like, it's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, look, I think maybe they say that because it's like, we're in 2023. Why don't you have 4 HDMI 2.1 ports? I think that's a great point. Um, but it's not going to affect most people. Are there movies where Dolby Vision isn't the right choice, less preferable? In some cases, there are. It depends on the TV, honestly. For the A95L, though, um, I'm not going to watch anything outside of Dolby Vision. If Dolby Vision is supported on the A95L, I'm going to watch it because from what I've seen so far, uh, Dolby Vision looks incredible. And so, yeah, it depends on the TV. 
you know, for example, my A80J. I don't watch Dolby Vision on my A80J, um, but the A95L looks great. So it really depends on the TV, I guess, is the the best way to, to say that. But I know like the typical user isn't going to sit there toggling on and off Dolby Vision. So in most cases, it's fine to use Dolby Vision for everything. But know that like if you're choosing a TV for Dolby Vision over a TV that has HDR10, that's going to be cheaper. Um, it's going to be a better value overall for you. I think that would be a mistake. For example, like somebody looking at the S90C but not going with it because it has no Dolby Vision. I feel like that would maybe be an oversight. Is the A95L a worthwhile upgrade from the A80J? I think it is. I think it is because you're going from a W OLED to a QD OLED. So that already is worth the upgrade. Um, I would say only though if you use it for gaming, for example. I think gaming, it is an upgrade. Um, movies and TV shows, if you're just like mainly movies and TV shows, you will see some differences here and there. You'll see a brightness difference, especially in brighter scenes. It's just less of an upgrade if you're not gaming. I would say if you're gaming, it is an upgrade for sure. Um, but as a whole, it is an upgrade. Is it worthwhile? Uh, that's hard for me to decide. Um, I'm kind of trying to decide that right now if I should do that upgrade or if I should just wait. Uh, because I love, I love, love, love my A80J still, and I think there's nothing wrong with it for the content I use it for. I don't game on it right now. Like, it's downstairs. I don't have a gaming console hooked up to it. It's really just, um, I watch some NFL games on it, and I watch the occasional movies on it. But that's it. It's kind of the entertainment TV um, right now. Not, not being used too much. Yeah, every TV is going to have this problem with their um, Ethernet ports. That's just how it's going to be. You're always better off using a USB um, to Ethernet to hook up if you are hooking up via Ethernet. No idea why they don't upgrade the ports. Uh, that's not on Sony. That's just the chip that they're using. That's a chip manufacturer thing. But you need eARC. I mean, not everybody uses eARC. Some people don't actually use it. But yeah, if you if you got a soundbar, you definitely do need it. There's no doubt about that. But I mean, it is really easy to get extra ports with a HDMI switch. But um. Yeah, I mean, I think if you are somebody that has multiple sources that need HDMI 2.1, maybe maybe go with a different TV um, if you don't want to jump through all those hope, hoops and stuff. Um, I know certainly I would. Did this TV wow you when you rewatched some scenes from your favorite movies on 4K? I still got to watch a couple more movies on this. Um, I've only watched one movie on Hulu. Um, and that was No One Will Save You. It was like a, a brand new alien movie, which totally freaked me out. When I was done watching that movie, I, I was freaked out. So like, if you want a freaky alien movie, watch No One Will Save You. Um, I, I, I like that movie a lot. Uh, but that movie was pretty cool to watch on it. Uh, what else? So far, that's really it. That's all I. That's all I watched movie wise. It's really been a lot of demo content and, and uh, TV watching. I watched a lot of YouTube TV. I watched the Bears and uh, who they play? The Bears, 
and the commanders, the Washington commanders yesterday. And um, yeah, I thought that it does a really good job of clearing the image up. And I really like the motion settings, being able to separate the the cameras on there to have 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. And then also a different setting for 60 frames per second. That's nice. Um, so yeah, the motion was really smooth when it comes down to that game. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Um, you won't rule it out, but I mean, if you do have multiple HDMI two point one devices, I understand why you would rule it out. But I think most people probably wouldn't. It wouldn't affect most people. That's why I say it's not a huge deal, because I don't know many people that need three HDMI two point one ports. Or even two. Like, uh, you either are probably having a PS5 or a Series X if you are using a 2.1 port. Not many people have both. And if you do have both, I mean, good for you. But not many people have both. Yeah, there's like one word in that movie. It's a lot like, um, A Quiet Place in that sense. I think that's what, you know, they were going for. I think they were going for that quiet place vibe. I liked it a lot. Surprised. Surprised how much I liked that movie. Freaked me out. It did freak me out. If you have a PC, you probably don't have a Series X. I mean, like, maybe. Some people have all three, which I understand. Some people have two. Some people just have one. Most people just have one, I would say. But there are those exceptions to the rules, right? Like I have multiple devices, but I'm I'm the exception to the rule. I, I review TVs, so I have to have these things. Still working on getting a gaming PC, though. Just don't, I don't have that yet. I, I need to work on that. I'm like in the department of some people where they're at the TVs or like, ah, next year something comes out. This demo again, man. I got to tell you, I hate that demo. Um, I'm at that point, though, where you're looking at um, different content, um, different TVs, right? Some people are looking at different TVs. I'll just wait till next year. That's where I'm at with graphics cards. I'm like, I'll just wait till the 50, 80 comes out or the 50, 90 or whatever. I'm I'm so bad when it comes to like deciding on what TV or what what PC to buy. I'm like and some people don't know what TV to buy. That part's a little bit easier for me just because like I've been doing this for a while and it's like it's kind of like one of my first loves when it comes down to understanding technology, but PCs like I used to be into the PC uh discussion where I was looking at graphics cards and always buying the latest but something changed I think when the Xbox One X came out that's when it changed for me I was like I just buy a Xbox One X instead of going with a PC we got all about TKK in the chat what's up man you got some good content out there keep it up Uh, I'm going to throw on some games in a second. I'm going to dark mode too. All right. Um, actually, the lights actually help the camera out. I'll keep the light on.
All right, so uh, I'm going to leave up a banner real quick. And I will be right back. What the heck? Trying to get this to work and it's not working. Trying to get games to load. They don't want to load. I got to reset my Xbox. Give me one second. All right. How the heck did I get upstairs? All right. So, um, everybody knows Starfield, right? So we're in game mode. So they have like a raised black level on this game. I don't know if you guys noticed that before. Um, not a big fan of it, so I went and made a different setting for it. It's made it more playable. And uh, fixed the game for me. I I'm happy with it now. So I can, I can play like this. Which is like one of the things that I really like about this TV is I could set up a custom mode to my liking and everything saves. So if I go through the picture settings on uh, game mode, for example, everything that I change on here is going to be saved to the setting. So maybe I want brightness preferred instead of uh, gradation preferred, right? Uh, like I said, maybe the black level on this game is a little bit too low for me. So I'll lower it a little bit. Maybe not that much. Maybe like 40. Actually, you might need to go to like 35 on this one. Um, let's say maybe you want a little bit more color on this game. Live color, crank it up. Maybe you like to play this game in, in a, a cooler temperature for some reason. I don't know. Um... I'm just giving these as examples. Don't say it. Not saying to copy these or anything. Uh, reality creation. Say maybe you want it to crank it up a little bit so you can kind of see the difference in the floor. 
All right, pay attention to the, the floorboards there. You can see, like, or the carpet. You know, there's a little bit of a difference there when you turn it on and off. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, reality creation doesn't affect the whole entire image. It's only portions of the image. If it's a it's an ad enhancement, it finds where things need work, and it improves those for you. You don't have to go 100% on it. I think 30 is a good sweet spot. But let's just say I wanted to crank it up, right? So I could do that for this mode. I can leave it at max on that one. Um, and then we could even change, let's say, like, for example, I would di want a different color space. I don't know why you'd want that. But let's just say I wanted this game in 709. Um, or maybe I wanted this game in HLG. Uh, it looks even worse. Um, but let's just say I wanted it in that, for example. Um, so let me go through here. And there you go. I personally wouldn't recommend that, but yeah, leaving it on auto makes a lot of sense. But it is nice that it saves a lot of the settings. Um, and you kind of just like make settings to your liking. I really like that. I really do like that. So I, one game a lot of people like me to check out is uh, Sea of Thieves. Because it has really good HDR and stuff. So let's fire that up. Probably needs an update. Everything needs an update. Do they have games for girls? I mean, technically, you know, any game can be for girls, right? Um, I told you it needed an update. Uh, I, it would all depend on what you're, what kind of games you're into. I know my niece loves uh, like Animal Crossing. She loves that game. But she also likes Zelda and stuff, so. There's a... There's a majority of different games, a variety of different games, not majority of different games. There's a variety of different games out there. There's something for everybody. I think we'll throw on some golf, I guess. It's got good HDR. Why not? I know, is Caleb up in here? Caleb loves golf. I always see him playing golf on the reviews. I'm going to have to play him one-on-one -on -one online one time. That's a challenge, Caleb, if you're listening. How about a Barbie game? Uh, I think there's Barbie games out there. Pretty sure there's Barbie games. Can you save settings as presets? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, you can absolutely do that. So here I'm in the standard game mode. Um, but like I made a, an RTS game mode low as the black level for um, Starfield, for example. So uh, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, it saves everything. And that's nice to have. Very nice to have. Of course, you have the option to add crosshairs to the game. Um, golf doesn't necessarily need crosshairs, uh, so I'm going to leave that feature off. Uh, black equalizer can be helpful if you're playing a first-person game. Um, you want to see in the shadows, that could be helpful. This is just black frame insertion here. Um, typical things. Nothing like uh, Game Motion Plus. Though, for those that are asking. Yeah, so throw throw some questions down in the chat. Uh, I'll be going for maybe about 15 more minutes or so. So if you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask. Let's go with the... I didn't even... Didn't even know this was a thing. 
I got the S95B on your recommendation. Now I'm considering that S90C is the build quality better. Um, it's about the same. I would say like, I think they cleaned up the issue with the bent panels, things like that. I haven't heard any complaints from the S90C. Like the chassis, for example, just looked the same as the S95B to me. So there doesn't seem to be any big changes from the S95B to the S90C as far as like the design goes. So, I mean, it uses a different stand, but other than that, first person golf, that is kind of cool. All right, let's go quick play. Are your questions getting avoided? Nah, I was just selecting some options. Let me uh, scroll up. I thought I answered one of your questions already. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, what story mode games did you try on the A95L and what is your favorite story mode game ever? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. The second question. Um, so I've tried like Starfield. Um, let's see what else I tried. I started, tried Assassin's Creed. I still need to do a lot more game testing uh, on the A95L, but so far I, I do like it. As far as my favorite story mode game ever, um, I don't know, maybe Xenoblade. I like that game a lot. Um, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was really good. I wasn't a huge uh, Zelda fan before Breath of the Wild, but that game made me a Zelda fan. So I really, I really like that game a lot. Let's see, I'm uh, looking through some other questions here. Lisa, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for the fun live stream. Hey, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm going to try to do more live streams. Um, next time I'll do the face cam thing. Uh, I do think those are typically easier to run than running multiple things by yourself. Like if I'm doing a camera on TV stream, I definitely need a co-host. It can be pretty. It can be pretty tough because it looks like I'm not moving on this golf game right now, but I'm just trying to run chat at the same time. I'm gonna throw on. Um, so I wanted to throw on Sea of Thieves, but it's updating. Uh, what do you guys want to see from the games that I got? Armored Core is pretty cool. I could show that off. Thank you. Um, as a QN90B owner, how much benefit uh, would I get from a high-end OLED? I love me. Um, hmm. I love the move from the LG B9 to a QN90B, but would a move to an S95C be as good? That's a tough question. Um, I think there's a lot to love about what you already get with something like a QN90B. I would say you get almost as much as your QN90B in most cases, but you're just getting like that perfect black level, right? You're getting a lot of what you loved about your B9 as far as um, the dark room performance goes, but you're getting the same benefits as like the QN90B, for example. So, you know, if you are wanting to go back to that OLED level blacks, then 
yes, it will make sense, um, especially since you get to keep a lot of your brightness from the QN90B. Um, I'd say going from an S95C, uh, coming from a QN90B, it will be as good of a move. Especially if you're somebody who watches in a dark room where you can see some of the downsides to QN90B, for example. It's a really great TV. And I think making that jump isn't probably the best move for everybody just because you're going from a new TV to a slightly newer TV. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think it depends on your viewing situation. Like if you're in a dark room, I would do it. If you're in a bright room, maybe you don't feel the difference as much. And maybe you actually lose some differences in certain cases. But I would say the majority of the time, um, these QD OLEDs are just as bright as an LCD TV in most scenes. And in darker scenes, they're brighter than the mini LED TVs. They are brighter than the mini LED TVs in the darker scenes. So, for example, you have a dark scene, but there's a lot of brightness involved to that scene. Let's say a, a nighttime scene with some neon lights like Vegas or Tokyo, something like that, right? Most of the time, more often than not, and I've shown this in examples, the QD OLED will be the brighter TV because the LCD TV has to rely on its dimming algorithm in order to kind of mask its downsides, right? Like, if you look at a Samsung LCD, one of the things that it does is it will go dimmer once you are in those tough situations, like I talked about a nighttime scene with a lot of lights, it's very hard for an LCD to control that. So I think it's a good move, but it is still like, it is hard to say, like, if you're going from size to size, I, I would go up a size if you are making that move, just so that that feels a little bit better. Hello, KG, don't make me buy another TV. What's up, Gaming Tech? Um, Marcus in the house. Um, yeah. It's a nice TV, I, I gotta say. So, like, one thing I did, um, Gaming Tech is for Starfield, for example, I made the RTS game mode, right? And what that does is it just lowered the black level a little bit, uh, made Starfield a little bit more playable because like games with like raised black levels like Starfield unplayable for me. This game doesn't seem to suffer too much um, with HDR. I actually like the HDR in this game. I haven't tested it like as far as like, how good it is. It just looks good to me. I really like this game a lot. The visuals in this game feel pretty good or look pretty good in my opinion. Also, don't judge my gameplay. I am also playing off of the stream right now, so there's a ton of like input lag. I'm not looking at the TV directly. I'm looking at chat mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but check out a uh, gaming tech channel. He has really great. Uh, footage and um, on TVs, not footage, sorry, Ver really great content on TVs regarding HDR and HDR settings. I think you just put up a new Assassin's Creed video, which is really good. I watched that and kind of want to buy that game now. But I'm going to wait because you know that, that that's the type of game that goes on sale on Black Friday, right? Like, I think so. Mm. All right. Try one more game. Yeah, we're we're definitely going to have to do a live stream. And I'm so happy to see the A95L now so like I can finally make my call. Like, you know, before I couldn't really make an evaluation video on, like, what's the best TVs? What's the best TVs? Like, 
I needed to see this TV to really be able to make my call. It's going to be different for everybody too. So like it's going to be a, it's going to be dialing down a use case this year. I think a lot of people are going to want to save money and get the S90 C um, if they're gamers, if that's all they do is game S90 C just seems like the best move. The best all around TV is probably going to be this <laughs> probably going to be this. I like Ghostwire. Ghostwire shows off QD OLED quite well. Quite well. Ah, that's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. We could try um to see what the the settings go for for HGIG and all that, right? Let's let's see if we can actually do HGIG with this TV. Typically in the past, you really couldn't. So let's see if anything is different as far as that goes. I have to look at what what that's disappearing at. I can't read that. So tone mapping off seems to click uh to clip at twelve hundred. I can't remember what it was on eighty ninety five K. I don't know if Classy's in here, but um, if you remember what it is on the A95K, let me know. Um, hey, real quick, gaming tech, what's a HGIG game that I have? I'll show my games right now. Hold on. I think Forza is? I'm not sure. I don't have Dirt 5 installed right now. I bet you Forza needs to update. I bet you. Yep. It's funny. Because this always happens. And I just updated all my games like last week. You missed a question? I was saying, what, what games really um, support HGIG from this list right here? Hey, yeah, thanks for uh thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. I'll take a couple more questions and then we'll we'll uh, wrap this one up. I just wanted to to look at the HGIG for people to see if this was a uh, going to be something we could do on the A95 though. And I'll I'll test it some more. I'll talk to Classy about it and see uh what the best method is to try to get this to work. Because uh, on past Sony TVs, HGIG wasn't really uh, something you could do. Super chats. Uh, thank you for the super chat. So he says, uh, Michael, thank you for the super chat. Can you show us a game that's washed out and show us how to correct it? 
up saturation pop. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I think the best example of that would probably be Starfield. So let me throw that on there. Every game is going to be kind of different as far as like a game that's washed out, making it pop more. Sometimes just up in color or live color is the best bet. Um, I really like using advanced contrast enhancer with this TV. I'm not a fan of it on Samsung TVs, but for Sony TVs, they do advanced contrast enhancer pretty well. That's something that I like about these TVs. Um, let's see what we got here. All right, we're going to continue in. I'm going to show you Starfield real quick. Well, I don't know if it does yet. Um, I'm testing that. Just you see if these, yeah, it's updating right now. Classy, it, um, in the HDR calibration, it, clipped at 1200 with um tone mapping set to off do you remember what it was on the a95k i would think it'd be higher than 1200 though right all right so we are in starfield I think I'm stuck in something because I can't move. Do you guys see this? Okay. All right. I was stuck. I was stuck for a second there. That was weird. Um, and I'm pretty sure when we quit, I was upstairs. This game is buggy. Um, anyway. So for this game, go into the picture settings real quick. Um, so let's just say you're using a uh, gradation preferred. For this game, I typically think like in order to enjoy it personally, I have to lower the gamma, right? The gamma definitely has to be lowered to about minus two or even minimum for this game. And then even the black level, I kind of dip that down a little bit too. So I go about 40 on the black level. You can even go 35 for this game. Um, and then you start to feel like there's just better representation of the black levels. Like it's not raised and ugly like it is before. I mean, you're not going to be able to fix this totally. And it looks... It looks like it's uh, darker than it's supposed to be. Hold on. Let me fix the camera. Alright. So, like... Now you won't be able to really see the menu, but um, you get an understanding a little bit of um, the differences here. So, but yeah, doing a a black black level reduction, like I said, thirty five, forty, lowering the gamma, that's gonna help a lot. I don't know why my camera got all weird and blurry. Um, but that's that happened. So I'll show you a little before and after. It's like here's before and after when it comes down to that. And then I have that same setting for RTS game, but that's one of the things you can do. Now when you're doing FPS mode, 
normally it has black equalizer on but i turned that off so i reset all the modes just basically back to regular um normal mode and then uh set my uh presets on for that but that's what i would do and like as far as making the picture pop a little bit more right i realize i have classic thing on there i meant to have the super chat up to answer this question and i'm sorry about that um, but i am currently answering that color for example as this is auto rotating um live color is a good way to make things pop a little bit more so i i typically got a lot of people who love live color again let me adjust the camera so you can see That's the downside about running a camera. You have to either have the exposure set to show the menus or the full image. It's like, you can't win on that one. But yeah, live color is a good setting to try. Sometimes just cranking up the color to 60 is fine um, if you want a little bit more extra to it. Um, I've mentioned in brightness, if you use brightness preferred, you can typically get um, a brighter presentation. As you can see, like, Everything's getting raised a little bit more. Some people do like that if they want to add a little bit more pop. Um, where's the uh, where's the advanced contrast enhancer at? And why is it not showing up? Is it gone? Am I blind? Hmm. I swear that advanced contrast enhancer was just here. Now I have to look and see, did they take it out of game mode? And that was just like something I didn't notice. Maybe it's only an SDR. It's usually under brightness, I believe. So I'm blind. Am I blind? This mode's in cool. Yeah, I know that. This is when I was showing an example of that. So yeah, but like those things is what I would do to clean it up a little bit. Um, somebody wanted to see a SDR game. Let's throw an SDR game. There's some things you could do with SDR uh, that some people have recommended that I try. It's not something that I personally would recommend doing, but I'll show you. So let's throw on an SDR game. Now let's throw on Ninja Turtles, I guess. Uh, take it easy, Marcus. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Every game needs an update. You serious right now? I don't think this is HDR, right? Who knows? This is actually maybe HDR. What the heck? Auto HDR. I don't want that then. 
I want a SDR game. I don't have the Switch hooked up right now. Otherwise, I would just go straight to that. But I will have that um, in a video. All right, let's go for... Uh, I don't know. I, I think... I know Vampire Survivors. Are, like, I don't think any of these games are going to work. This will probably be the quickest update, though. All right. Let me look through questions. Um, would I be mind blown by the A95L S95C coming from a C2? Like, is there a huge difference? I think so. Yeah. I think going from a W OLED to a QD OLED is a big difference. Now, I would definitely try to compare them side by side if you can, once you get one of those, because then you can really, really see the difference. But yeah, there's a difference. And I think people are very surprised by how bright these TVs can get when they first see them. How many nits of the sun up close? A lot. A lot. Yeah, that's how I feel too. All right, looks like it's done. Okay, now let's try out SDR and then we'll wrap it up. So if you guys have any last questions about the A95L, now's the time to do it. We got Ninja Turtles running right now. All right, so just going to show you a couple of things you can do. Um, so one thing you can do with SDR, someone recommends that uh, I show you this. So I will show you this. Uh, you can actually manipulate the video signal if you want to. And um, you can force HDR um, if you want to on certain games. That's going to definitely wreck the image in a lot of cases. Um, and then HLG is going to be less of the image getting wrecked. But some people like this. So you can kind of see the difference there. Um, it can add a little bit more pop. And you can typically go with that if you want to. You can change the color space if you really want to. But it's not really recommended. Again, I'll just show you a couple of gameplay with this. As far as uh, like the brightness goes for SDR gaming, it's pretty bright, honestly. Uh, I have virtually no complaints.
everybody needs a little more turtle pop, right? Um, that's a good question. What's the difference? Uh, if you see me getting beat up, by the way, it's because I'm uh, on the chat. Um, what's the difference in game mode between the S95C, S90C, and the A95L? I'd say the biggest difference is going to be the actual image clarity. It's a little bit better on the A95L. It is. And it is something that I can notice um, when it's next to a Samsung. It's slight. It's slight, but it's there. And the next thing is features. There's a little bit more features going for the Samsung. So Samsung, of course, has Game Motion Plus, which is motion interpolation for gaming at a lower latency. The only company that has that, by the way. Uh, so that's something that's exclusive to Samsung TVs. So they have that going for them. Uh, they have slightly lower input lag. Though the difference when you have them next to each other, the feel is not much different. Like the numbers are going to seem like a lot, but there's not a huge difference as far as feel goes. So I doubt the input lag will bother most people. If you're a competitive gamer, you might want to stick to LG or Samsung in that sense, because maybe every millisecond matters to you. Uh, but short of that, I think people who aren't competitive um and when i'm saying competitive i mean like you play in the pro circuit things like that or you actually try to be a pro that's all i'm saying um uh, but most people input lag's not gonna be an issue on sony tvs i would say s95c and a95l are fairly close man fairly close it's all about uh use case right you could do silly things like uh, put the uh, SDR into HLG, like I'm doing now. You can't do that with the Samsung, as far as I know. Let's see. Um... I'm going to die because uh, I'm looking through chat. But yeah, those are that's like the biggest difference. Um, if you're going for a strictly gaming TV, I mean, it's probably the S90C. You save money. But that's not to say the Sony can't game. It definitely can, right? It's just, it's a value point at that point. Like, if you're just gaming, the S90C can do almost as good as the S95C, so... But if you do other things other than gaming, the A95L is probably the best TV. And that's, you know, a subjective thing to say, but so far it's the best TV I've seen. <laughs> I just wanted to show you SDR. Um, that's why I threw on Turtles. All right. So yeah, you can do things with the video signal if you want to um, without having to, to go through menus and all that. It's kind of cool. Kind of nice thing to do. Uh, kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. The S95C will be upgraded in the sense of it's an OLED TV. So you're getting the benefits of an OLED and you're also getting some of the benefits of a LED TV or an LCD TV, whatever you want to call it. You're getting the best of both worlds with a QD OLED. And that's truly the case. Like I mentioned, the LCD TVs will be dimmer in some cases than a QD OLED, depending on the scene. 
I would say like a, just if you go look at my S95C versus QN90C video, you'll really understand what I'm talking about with that. All right, you guys are amazing. I appreciate you so much for stopping by. Thank you to everybody who sent a super chat. Thank you to everybody who chatted in chat. Um, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I appreciate that so much. Um, just a few things before I go. If you guys end up buying a TV this holiday season or anytime in the next couple of weeks, you know, one thing you might want to do is wait until October, right? October, late October. Sorry, it is October. Uh, so wait until late October, the last week of October, we'll start seeing these Black Friday sales. So I would hold off, hold off on your purchase for about a couple weeks. We'll get these Black Friday sales pretty soon and I'll cover them. I'll make sure to cover them. And then once you guys are ready to buy a TV, if you could please consider using the affiliate links when you are ordering your TV, man, that helps out so much. Um, I don't have a lot of sponsors on this channel. I hardly have sponsors on this channel. Um, it's something that I've avoided taking sponsors for a very long time. And um, I only want to go with companies that I can trust and recommend to you guys. So like, that's why I rely on affiliate links to uh, run this channel. So that is a big part of it. So if you guys do buy a TV, please use those links. That helps out so much. And if you guys are ever just needing a question answered, you know, leave it in the comments. I'll try to hit you guys up. Um, I'm also on Twitter and you can always contact me on there. So thank you guys as always for stopping by. It was great to chat with everybody again. So thank you so much and have a great day.